Good morning, guys. It's day 24, 25. Who knows out here in the woods? All right. Well, leaving Molly's ridge shelter in the Smokies. And I'm headed to either Davenport Gap shelter or they're not Davenport Gap. Something that starts with a D. I forgot the name of it now. Um, but it's Gap Shelter, which is 12 miles away. Or Shiloh Broad Shelter, which is 17.5 miles away. Which is where I'd love to get to today. But it's going to rain. Starting at 12. And to 4. And then it's supposed to thunderstorm at 4. So I do not know that I can make 17 miles in 8 hours. Because it's like 8.30, 8.40 now. Um, so I might have to stop at that one that starts with a D because of the thunderstorms. But we'll see. That weather was for the shelter we were just at. And... Uh, who knows, it may be different at a different shelter. So we're just gonna walk and see where the day takes us. I gotta do, if I do 15 miles every day, I'll be out of here in time to meet the wifey. And uh, that's very doable. The problem is, is that Smokies doesn't divide it up in 15 mile days. You got to do like 12, if I do 12, and I can do oh, like 17 tomorrow and into Newfound Gap, maybe get a ride in the Gatlinburg to take a shower, dry some clothes, just depending on, you know, so just got to judge it. I got enough food. Um, I just wish it wasn't going to rain, that's for sure. But rain is a part of the Appalachian Trail. It's cold. Um, oh, the wind is cold. It's warm inside my tent. And I gotta, gotta get out and pack it up. I have my ground cloth cover in my pack this morning because the last time when it rained the other day, um, my pack got soaked, so I'm using that as a cover. Let's see how well this works. Whew. All right, guys, I'll put you guys down so I can walk this because it's it's not a hard walk. It's just very technical because there's mud, there's rocks. There's leaves, you don't know if the mud's slippery. Oh. But my ankles look good this morning. They were really swollen yesterday and sore. Um, did my longest day yet on the trail. And I woke up this morning, my legs feel great. Oh. Anyway, I will talk to you guys in a little while. Whew. Beautiful views this morning. How cold it is, my, my nose is running and my mouth is cold. Hello. Alright guys. Well, come down off that mountain. It's a lot warmer. And also the weather feels better. You don't feel that rain in the air. But I'm doing my best to roll through here. Um you know, yesterday, my yesterday or the day before, my video dropped of, of me leaving out of Dick Creek, and you know it was a rough day mentally. But I feel like that, you know, number one, this is my personal journey. Number two, I feel like if you're a future through hiker. You need to know that, man, you're going to have days like that where 
your darkest feelings and darkest thoughts why they will come to the surface and you know I do have those moments of feeling worthless and I don't doubt that everybody probably has them at times you know um but the encouraging words that I have gotten from the people who love me to just remind me that you know I'm not worthless I'm loved it just man it warms my heart it makes me it's like it just put it puts like wings on my feet you know it's so uplifting makes my pack feel lighter I swear it does um you know my aunt Delilah she always gives me such encouraging words. And I can always just tell her how I feel. And she don't beat me down for it. She just acknowledges it. And reminds me that even though I might feel like that in the moment. Or I just might feel like that in general. She just reminds me that that's not true. And I want to thank my Aunt Delilah for that. Because she's been doing that for with me for a couple of years now. Since I started in therapy. And therapy is not easy. Not the therapy I'm going through anyway. Trauma therapy is, is a hard thing. And she has always been consistent. She gives me my space when I need it. She gives me those virtual hugs through text and always reminds me that no matter what she just loves me and thank you for that Aunt Delilah so don't know how much it means um got a beautiful message from Papa T yesterday Papa T is Caitlin's dad and he's so encouraging He sent me the most beautiful text yesterday to remind me that I'm not selfish for being out here. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna stretch my ankle. Ooh, tell you why my legs are getting stronger. That ankle rolled and I can pop right back up. But just reminded me to stay focused on my purpose. That I have this. And that I am loved. And that I'm not worthless. Thank you for that, Papa. And thank you, Aunt Delilah. God, my hair looks crazy, don't it? Oh, I st ooh, stepped on an incline last night purposefully. Made sure I got all the swelling out of my legs and my feet. You guys can see it this morning, can't you? I always look like somebody beat me up when I do that. But... I'd rather have swelling in my eyes and off my legs. Alright. So looking at it. It's just beautiful out here today. You know, you know it's gonna rain. It's that calm before the storm. It's not even calm, it's windy, it's kinda chilly. And uh I tell you what, I'd love to have a piece of piece of property that looked like this I could run around on I mean I trust me I have some property I can run around on oh, me and my daddy would definitely have a ball on this piece of property <laughs> oh, Tigger and fire they're behind me they seen a baby cub and a fox yesterday and I didn't see nothing but a worm and a bird oh I think the bears are scared of me. If you want me to be honest, I may not even see one the whole trip. Bears be like, shoot, I ain't messing with that girl. She's crazy. She got a box cutter around her neck. <sighs> and yeah, that's what this is. 
you know, hey, you gotta have protection out here. It's a box cutter. And I keep it rusty. <laughs> Cause I'm like, hey, if I have to pull this out and use it, you definitely getting a tetanus shot. <laughs> so uh yeah. I don't use it for anything else. And it's right here. Got a whistle on the back of it. It's my protection. <laughs> it's funny because You'll get a kick out of this one, Delilah. But, so I'm hiking with a guy named Baron, and he's from Southern Pines. Great guy. And a couple years older than me. And as soon as he realized where I was from, he calls him Robinson County. And, uh, I told him, I said, call me Mies, man. Don't call me Robinson County. But he loves to call me Robinson County, so, Rob Cool. So, I don't care. I've gotten over it. Um, but, he said that his mom was a nurse at Moore Regional. And he's like, man, my mom would tell me stories about how in the 80s and 90s, she would have to stitch up a whole bunch of lumbies because they would fight with knives and cut each other. <laughs> and all I could think about was Braddy's. <laughs> And I just laughed when he said that. And he said, man, he said, my uncle, he said he built a, built something. And the man he hired was from Robinson County. He said, all the guys came to work. And they had big old knives. So they had big old knives around their waist, you know, attached to the belt loop. He said, is that a cultural thing? With the knives <laughs> and and I go well it might be <laughs> Woo! as the saying goes hey no mess with us we'll cut you <laughs> man if that didn't tickle me cuz in my 47 years <laughs> going around you know I've lived everywhere all over North Carolina <laughs> and people always say hey man my granddaddy always said, don't mess with y'all. Y'all cut people. <laughs> and I'm out here rolling with the Gerber. I call him Roger. The reason why I call him Roger is because a man named Roger gave me this. Um, came over to do some work on one of my houses. And um, and he seen a knife that I had laying around. And he was like, man, I love that knife. And I'm like, he had pulled his out to do something. I was like, man, I love your knife. And it's a Gerber. And so, and so he said, I'll, he said, he said, he asked me if I wanted it. Or, or I told him, uh, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I'll give you, give you that knife. I said, I don't use it. It's too big for me. It's too heavy. You know, it's too heavy for me to carry. Can't carry it around my belt loop or anything like that. I said, no, I don't wear a belt like that to carry that knife. I said, so it's just really too heavy for me. And he said, well, i tell you what, I'll give you my Gerber. And she gave me that knife. It was like one of those CCRTs or whatever. And, uh, and so it was a nice knife. It wasn't doing me any good, you know? So we did a knife swap. Roger gave me this, and I gave him a knife. <laughs> and, and it's perfect. It's lightweight. I put, put this little uh, thing around it that has a whistle on it, this little necklace. And it's absolutely perfect. It's like... And I, I usually put a, a clean, you know, a box cutter or a knife, a little blade in it. But I didn't this year, I said, because I'm not going to use it for anything but protection. And it's still sharp. It says I've been out here and it's raining and it's got rusty. So, <laughs> so yes, Baron. I guess it, maybe it is a cultural thing. <sighs> I wanted to show you guys from here. It's about to rain. And just wanted to show you guys what I was seeing right now. Ooh, wind's blowing so hard up here. Hey, welcome to the smokies. Woo. 
Not halfway to, to Derek, Derek Knob Shelter. That's what the name of the next one is. I just left Spence Field. Had a little lunch. And, uh, you know, for everybody out there who's wondering, I just want you guys to know that pooping in the woods is not easy. Especially when it's cold. And there are no privies in the Smokies. It's beautiful. Um, so far, I have not found Smokies to be difficult. To knock the Fontana, still the hardest, hardy section, hands down. All right, guys, I'm putting this phone up because it's supposed to be start thunderstorming at four. And I did those first six miles, like 6.3 in two and a half hours. So. I like to get to Silent Ball Shelter, but I also don't want to get hypothermia if it starts raining and then there's such as thunderstorms that's supposed to roll in. So I may have no choice but to stop at Derek. No, may have no choice to check but to check out Derek's knob. <laughs> All right. Once again, the hook slide said it was a view. <laughs> the smoky said, I'll make a liar out of you yet. And there's actually little pieces of ice mixed in with it. One of those nasty days of hiking. Oh. It's one of those days I wish I was in the hotel room late up watching TV. But, you know, this is what you come for to see what you're made of. ground sheet which was wrapped around my pack and they're like 40 mile per hour gusts of winds going across this thing and it's just a terrible day of hiking I'll tell you that it's like little pellets of hail and wind blowing at you it's just bad you know, there ain't nothing nice about the Smoky so far. I mean, it's not that it's bad terrain. I mean, it's not like it's high, steep, and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's just mud and rocks. Since I've got in here, you slip and slide. And now I've lost my rain cloth, my ground cloth for my tent. There goes 50 bucks. And I'm not going back to get it. <sighs> because it's just too dangerous. I mean, I just went across the top of two somethings. And, and I almost got knocked over t like five times. It's like being out in a hurricane. It's the best way for me to describe it. 
and there's ice and there's like wind advisories and all this stuff the thing is it's not like when you get in here you can walk to a road crossing and get out And it's just nasty. Like, look at this. It's just nasty. Even if it wasn't raining, it was still like this because there's still snow on the ground from the other day, from last weekend. It's just nasty. Ever who said the Smokies are beautiful? Lied. Because honestly, ain't nothing been beautiful about this place. But I mean, yesterday, he got some decent views. But it was like 70 degrees, hotter than two hails. And in the day, it's blowing ice balls at you. So is there anything nice about the Smokies? Nope. You can't get out. You're forced to stay in here. Forced to carry food. No matter when you can come in this place, it's always storms. And there's always just no views, man. Like the only people who get views in the Smokies are section hikers and weekend hikers. Because they can plan. <sighs> anyway, I whipped out, I lost my ground cloth, my ground cover. Just whipped out that that was a 50 bucks wasted but guess that dropped me seven ounces that's for darn sure oh well chalk it up to a loss to whoever has to pack it out i'm sorry i don't even know where it went for all i know it's blowing from one mountain to the other like somebody gonna find it some farmer gonna find it Somebody gonna find it on a whole different trail. It'd probably be up in a tree. I do believe today has been the hardest day. It just rained. It just wind blew. I'm so cold. And you can't stop in friggin' Smokies and just pitch a tent. And I have this problem where when I get cold, my breast hurt, and my breast hurts so bad right now. Like I'm warm, but because my hair is wet, my head is wet. God, it was so it hurt so bad. I'm cold. I'm cold because I'm wet. My feet are wet. And it's just for me wet all day. Lulu, I get what you mean when you say the smoke is made you want to quit. It's like I, I get in a hurricane. It's like, it's like your internal body temperatures just get so cold out here. And there ain't nothing you can do. You can't just stop and bitch your tea. Oh, I mean, I held a rich runner and yelled at us. Put our pack down and then go to get water. There's nowhere to poop. You have to poop and shit in the rain. And, just, and it's cold. 
cool rain, too. It's just, it's demoralized. <sighs> I had a mind pooping in the woods. But you just get cold and you don't get warm. It's not like snow, you know, it's just, I mean, there were, I got the snow on, I got sleeted on, and it just, I'm just so cold. My core body temperature right now is just so cold. I mean, I have old dry clothes, but it's just cold, and the wind don't stop. Look at it. Oh, I just, I just don't quit. It's like, you know, it's a weather advisory. Bag is just all wet, and I love my ULA, but damn it, it's like a sponge. And for it to even get dry, I gotta hike 17 miles tomorrow. Oh, it's just I hate the Smokies. Let me just go ahead and say that. And then I think I got a fever blister, and it's probably because I can't poop right. Oh, this darn processed food that you got to eat out here. Ah, my breast just hurts so bad. There's got to be, there's got to be a name for that where when you get headlights and they stay on the bright and they just won't cut off. Oh. Oh. Yeah, today's been a hard day. I haven't had a day yet where I just got in the camp and just cried. Oh. And I know you guys are like, well, you should have started later. Yeah, but guess what? If I start later, then I have to deal with all those young stuff. Stupid people that be out here. They have no respect for other people. I'm already dealing with one group out here that's like that. They're just arrogant and loud and just. against you. Life is against you. Oh, I'm just, oh, just cold. Just cold. I think I should have sent my dinner up miles back. God, it ain't got warm. But I couldn't. God forbid the red trader comes along. Hey, you're trying to save your friggin' life. It's just so cold right now. God, it's frustrating. Anyway, gonna make him try to make me some tea. I just, I can feel my skin. It's like waterlogged. I can feel it wetting the, the clothes I put on.
raining in here. I hate the Smokies. Yeah, it makes me want to go out tomorrow and, and then come back and do them last 30 miles of the Smokies later. But if it were to warm up, or just the freaking sun to come out, you know? You guys, like I tell myself, Carissa, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, I'm gonna try it. Like, I can't even hardly use my hands. I can't, I can't. Like, my fingertips are so cold. Those gloves already busted. I just bought them, for God's sakes. Like, I legit just bought them. I haven't even used them for 30 miles. Well, okay, maybe 45. But still, I'm just, clearly I'm going to have to go get some little kids' baseball gloves. It's the only thing durable enough for this trail. Oh, I'm just frustrated. So frustrated. So frustrated that to deal with 40 mile per hour, 50 mile per hour gust of winds, it's ripping off back covers and crap. Oh, I just. Oh, like I'm so cold. Just, my legs are wet. From. So, being wet. Oh. And then, you know, I got this down bag, and, you know, down has to be out of the little thing before, you know, blow itself back up before it can get you warm. Look. Like, I got a little thing, I got two toboggans trying to just see anything, trying to get warm. I'm trying to keep my body eating. <sighs> Coming that thing on. <sighs> Mountain hardware. Just want you to know. Your puffy might be light. But it ain't. So if you're gonna buy a puffy, don't buy mountain hardware. It's not very warm. I've never felt like it's been very warm since the first time I ever used it. It's just, it's a rough day. I guess, you know, fire would say, well, get out your emergency blanket. Not that. Just, you know, if my breast would stop hurting, I could deal with it. But anyway, I will holler at you guys tomorrow. Oh, I just hope for a better day. I feel like Michael Jackson. We are the world. We are the hikers. Come to hike the AT for you and me. We are the world. We are the hikers. We are the hikers. <laughs> All right. I still have lost my sense of humor, even if I am about to race. Like, if anybody knows if there's a syndrome out there to explain why my breast hurts so bad and how I can get the frostbite off my nipples, 
please leave a comment below. I feel like I'm gonna got a fever blitz to tell you. This has been a rough day. I just I mean in smart world when we put through like this these have been in my pack, right? Everything that was in my pack that was I mean it just they're not wet but they they feel damp because my hands and my body are so damp. And so, like, everything I put on is trying to absorb the wetness. Anyway. I want to let y'all later. Two, not one, but two fingers. Just in case y'all don't know what two fingers mean. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Alright. Just wanted to give you guys a little recap. I feel better. Hey. Um. Hey. I don't know what it was. Um, but it was from Wevac Tech. Um, it was just rice, hamburger meat, and like, I think it might have been onions, and I think there might have been onion in there. I don't know, bell pepper or something. Um, it's pretty good. I think it, I have to give it compliments I had to. <laughs> and the nice spices. Um, it was good. I ate a lot. Um, I tried the hot water in the Ziploc bag. Um, because I'm wondering, thinking about um, sitting at home my pot and then uh, anything that like my rice that I like to do with like beef jerky, whatever. Um, I can make that in a Ziploc bag. So, um, just tried that out tonight. I mean, it worked good. I just don't know how many times I could reuse a, a Ziploc bag. That makes me a little, you know, worried. So, um, but, um, that was nice. Um, after I put the hot water in the Ziploc bag, I actually put it inside my clothes while it hydrated um and man that'll warm you up and once that once I got warm um everything else seemed to get warm so anyway feeling better finally got warm it's finally not there's no smoke blowing in my tent you know, before I could blow and just smoke for days. Um, but T Ranger Rick <laughs> said the tent doesn't provide any insulation. It's a lie. Um, anyway, <laughs> but it's just in my head, then I'm controlling science. <laughs> anyway, um, Hmm, hopefully I'll have a better day tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain now. So that means I can dry everything out. Um, and screw the smuggies. But anyway, hopefully I get to clean this dome tomorrow. So, bye guys. And, uh, yeah. I guess I'm gonna have to give me some hand, some boob warmers. <laughs> That's what I need. Not hand warmers, boob warmers. Need like an electric bra out here. Anyway, if any people know anybody who makes an electric bra, <laughs> like an electric blanket, <laughs> put batteries in it, like let it be rechargeable. Man, I bet that thing would sell. Somebody. 
like somebody's with malfunction and they would like burn their breast and then they would sue and then they'd go out of business. Anyway, just, just a thought. I mean, hey, if we can get toilet seats that warm up. Why can't we get a like a bra that's warm? It's like an electric bra, like an electric blanket. Anyway, boob warmers. See those people who make the hot hands? That's what I want you to make for me. Just me personally. You don't have to make it for anybody else. Just me. Anyway, you know, you could use hand warmers, but they would probably be too hot. So you boob warmers would be like baby hand warmers. You know what I mean? It's like baby, baby hand, hand warmers so they didn't get like too hot. And then you wouldn't need them to be with like this big, you know, maybe like that. Like size of 50 cent pieces. Just enough to just keep the boobs warm. I mean, like, imagine if that worked like 12 hours of crap, like the hand warmers. <sighs> I'd buy those. Definitely would buy those. I would pack those out. Pack them in, pack them out. Anyway, um, clearly, all is well making jokes, but well, you could tell I was crying earlier. Had my ugly cry. <laughs> ugly crying because cause I was cold. Like, the, the climb doesn't bother me. Oh my god. <sighs> man, I tell you what, this cold rain, I don't like it. Oh man, I don't like it at all. It's the second time I feel like I have gotten hypothermia. And you just get chilled all the way through. And there's nothing you can do. It just, just wait it out. And it just, yeah, it's, but, all is good in the woods. So I can get up in the morning and see if I can like make up the three miles that I didn't get in today. Cause I need to do 15, 15, and 15. And then whatever I don't get, then I have to do on that last day. And I'm trying to avoid having to do like a 20 mile day, the last day that my family gets here. Um, Cause I want to be able to spend so much time with him, even on that day, even on that day when they get here. Uh, sorry. But, drop me some tea. Um, pulled one of my Aussie girls' numbers, and I probably definitely packed out some tea. And I found some milk in the hiker box, which is exciting. Oh, man. Man, I tell you what, that slipping and sliding in the mud. God, it hurts my ankles so bad. I mean, it's like your ankles are just going like this. You know, and you're trying to stabilize and just, man, it hurts. To what? I'm gonna enjoy my couple of days off. Anyway, good night, everybody. Talk your head off. I'll say good night. Oh, yeah. Say it again. And I will talk to you guys in the morning. Good night. Thanks for watching.